Hey, I recently made a trip to New York City and I wanted to log some of the things I did and share it with you. We start off in Brooklyn, which is where we stayed. Our first stop is Chinatown. It's a familiar feel as I've been here before, although the streets are slightly less crowded and there's outdoor seating almost everywhere. We buy some banh mi sandwiches from banh mi Saigon and eat it outside of a place called Ali Mama Tea. The guy saw us eating our sandwiches and said they were exactly what he was looking for and proceeded to get some himself. The sandwiches were indeed tasty. Ali Mama Tea serves refreshing drinks and some pastry desserts. This is the taro munchkin dish, which is a vegan mochi donut. It has just the right amount of sweetness to complement its chewy texture. The next stop is Japan Village in Industry City. This opened up in 2018 and houses several stalls and businesses that sell everything from books to soba and udon noodles made daily to sushi grade fish and Japanese sake and whiskey. Here we are just walking around exploring the area. There are many beautiful murals on the walls to admire and a fully stocked Japanese grocery store that makes you feel like you're in a market in Japan. Here's some of that sushi grade fish that I was talking about. We bought some curry flavored cup noodles for breakfast the next day. My friend suggested I try it out. Surrounding the grocery store is a food hall with many choices of Japanese cuisine. We tried the ramen at a place called Ramen Satei Gaya. This is their tonkatsu ramen dish. Still around the Japan village area, we met up with some friends and sampled some Japanese sake at a place called Brooklyn Kuro, which is a craft sake brewery based in Brooklyn. Thanks for the drinks and here's to the memories we made during the trip. This is Little Island. As described on its website, quote, rising from the remnants of Pier 54, Little Island sits on a site that has played a pivotal role in the story of the Hudson River and its surrounding communities. Every visit to Little Island is a reminder of the dynamic evolution of New York City's waterfront. The park is a reimagined type of public space for New York one that creates an immersive experience with nature and art. In order to get access to the park, you must book a timed entry free reservation after 12 p.m. If you are going before 12 p.m., no reservation is necessary. Just walk right in. We managed to get to the park before 12 and spent close to an hour there exploring.
For lunch, we tried out Kogane Ramen, which is near Little Island. We got there right when it opened and had the place all to ourselves for some time. It didn't take long for people to come in though. I enjoyed the decorations and the environment inside the restaurant as much as I did the food. Surprise, we all ordered ramen. One spicy, one regular tonkatsu, and one with lobster and miso soup base. The price of the bowls of ramen ranged from $14 to $18, with the lobster being the most expensive. Here is the lobster ramen. It had a perfectly cooked egg, four large chunks of lobster, and a savory yet light soup base. This is our trip to Roosevelt Island where I wanted to check out the abandoned hospital at the southern tip. We took the subway to the island, but afterwards one of our friends told us this was not the best way to get there. What we should have done was taken the tram ride across which runs along the Queensboro Bridge. It has a great bird's eye view of the river and the city, it's a fun ride, and it costs the same as a subway ride to the island. So don't be like us. Take the scenic route. We continued walking south and stopped at the Cornell University Tech Campus to take a break. After about 30 minutes or so, we reached the southern end where the abandoned hospital is located. It's called the Smallpox Hospital because it was notably used to treat smallpox patients away from the general population of New York back in the 1800s. At the very end of this walk is the Franklin D. Roosevelt Four Freedoms State Park. The park, quote, is the first memorial dedicated to the former president in his home state of New York. Located on the southern tip of Roosevelt Island in New York City, it is the last work of the late Louis I. Kahn, an iconic architect of the 20th century. The park celebrates the Four Freedoms, as pronounced in President Roosevelt's famous January 6, 1941 State of the Union speech. Freedom of speech and expression, freedom of worship, freedom from want, and freedom from fear. We enjoyed the scenery here and took some pictures before leaving. In the evening, we hung around Brooklyn, specifically the Dumbo area. We visited one of the most popular locations to snap a shot for Instagram. At the corner of Washington and Water, the Manhattan Bridge arches serve as the backdrop for this location seen in countless Instagram pictures and in movies. I didn't take any pictures with my phone with my camera, but opted to film it a bit. We were walking around the area and happened to stumble upon a rooftop location where we can see a view of the city. This place is called the rooftop at Time Out Market. We decided to check it out and ended the night with a few drinks. The next morning started with an attempt to experience the newly opened Harry Potter flagship store. We knew that we had to wait in a virtual line by scanning a QR code early in the morning. However, the wait ended up being roughly two and a half hours and we already had plans later in the day. Nevertheless, we got a spot to see if we would be notified earlier. There were a few other things that we did that are not included in this video, like an omakase sushi experience with Sushi Bayam a visit to Koreatown, and the Ropes obstacle course experience at the Bronx Zoo. If you made it this far, thanks for watching, and I hope you were entertained or informed, hopefully both. And if you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing for more videos. Thanks.